Welcome. In this video, we're going to be learning about Gibbs free energy. So let's say we have this reaction. A plus B makes C and D. We want to know if this reaction will happen at 25 degrees Celsius. Now we have two options. It either will happen or it won't. But to get to the answer, we have to work out delta G. The G stands for Gibbs free energy. If the value for delta G is negative, that means the reaction will happen. Another word for saying it will happen is to say it is feasible or is spontaneous. And if delta G is positive, then the reaction won't happen. So to work out delta G, we're going to use the equation delta H minus T delta S. Now before we continue, make sure you're familiar with calculating entropy changes. Okay, now we know the units for delta H are kilojoules per mole. And temperature is measured in Kelvin for this equation. Delta S stands for entropy and it's measured in joules per Kelvin per mole. Now since the units for delta G are commonly kilojoules per mole, that means we have to divide this by a thousand to turn the joules into kilojoules. So here's an example of a question. Calculate the value for delta G. And we've also been given entropy data. So to work out delta G, we're going to do delta H minus T delta S. We've already been given the value for delta H and temperature is given to us. However, it's in degrees Celsius. So we're going to add 273 and turn that into Kelvin. Perfect. Now we also have the temperature. To work out delta S, we haven't been given it. So we're going to use the data and use this equation to work out the value for delta S. So reactants first. We're going to do four times ammonia and five times oxygen. So using the table, we're going to then add them together and that gives us 1797. That's the total entropy of the reactants. We're going to do the same for the products. So four molecules of nitrogen monoxide and six water. And adding them together gives us 1978. Next, we're going to do products, take away reactants and we get 181. So now we have all three components of the equation. Let's now plug them into the equation and work out the value for delta G. Minus 905 for enthalpy, minus 905 for enthalpy, take away temperature in Kelvin, times by entropy. Now notice the entropy has been given to us as joules. So we have to divide this by a thousand to turn it into kilojoules. And then we can put that into the equation. And that gives us an answer of minus 1063 kilojoules per mole. Also, because it's a negative value, that means at 600 degrees Celsius, this reaction is feasible. Now, part B. Here's the next part of the question. The same reaction was carried out at a higher temperature. Explain how this would affect the value for delta G. Since it's the same reaction, that means the entropy change will be the same. And so will the enthalpy. However, the temperature has increased. So if we look at our equation, we can see that we have two main components, delta H and T delta S. Delta H hasn't changed. However, T, which is part of this component, has increased. Therefore, the whole component becomes greater. So the value for T delta S becomes larger. This means now we have delta H take away a larger number. And as a result, the value becomes more negative. So here we saw that changes in temperature can affect the value for delta G. Next, we'll look at how changes in enthalpy and entropy can affect delta G. So whenever you have a reaction, enthalpy can be positive or negative, and so can entropy. Temperature will always be a positive value because it's measured in Kelvin. The lowest value for Kelvin is zero, and from there it just goes up. So because we have two types of enthalpy and two types of entropy, we can get four possible combinations. So let's look at all four scenarios and see how they affect delta G. We want to look for when will the reaction be feasible, i.e. when will delta G be negative. So let's start with scenario one. In scenario one, delta H is positive and delta S is positive. That gives us a positive number, take away temperature, times a positive number. To make sense of this, we'll use some random numbers. So let's say enthalpy is plus 10, temperature is one, and entropy is plus five. That means together, these two will become one times five, 
which is 5. And the equation becomes 10 take away 5, which gives us plus 5. So that's a positive number, meaning the reaction will not be feasible. However, what about when temperature is large? When temperature increases, so let's say instead of 1, it becomes 10. Now things become a bit different. We still have a positive number take away a positive number. However, because temperature is larger, that means we have a greater value for T delta S. So now we have 10 take away 50, which gives us minus 45. And that makes it feasible. So to summarize, in the first scenario, when you have a positive delta H and a positive delta S, the reaction will only be feasible when temperature is high. Or in other words, when T delta S is greater than delta H. Now we have a positive delta H, but a negative delta S. That means this part will always be a negative value. So we have a positive value take away a negative value. And we know that plus take away minus is going to be always positive. Since delta G will always be positive, that means the reaction will never be feasible. Moving on to scenario three. Now we have a negative delta H and a positive delta S. This part, therefore, will always be a positive number. So we have a negative value take away a positive value. This will always be negative. So that means at all temperatures, the reaction will be feasible. Moving on to the last one. So now we have a negative delta H and also a negative delta S. So we'll use some random numbers. Let's say that delta H is minus 10 because it's negative. Temperature is 10 and delta S is also going to be minus 5, also a negative number. So that means 10 times minus 5 will be minus 50. So we have 10 take away minus 50. And that gives us plus 40. So because it's positive, that means the reaction is not feasible. However, what about if we lower the temperature? So instead of 10, the temperature is now 1. That means we have 10 take away minus 5. And this gives us minus 5. A negative answer. So that means the reaction will be feasible. So to summarize, in scenario 4, when both delta H and delta S are negative, the only time the reaction will be feasible is at low temperatures. So going back to this question again, let's see if we can answer it using what we've learnt. So we've been given the data already, and we can use our table that we just made, and so we know that the reaction falls under this category. Delta H is negative, and delta S is positive. So delta G is going to be equal to minus take away plus. However, the temperature has increased as mentioned in the question. So if the temperature increases, that means all of this becomes larger. So now we have minus take away a larger number. Therefore, it's going to be more negative. Okay, so here we have an example of a multiple choice question. To answer these kind of questions, it's very important to use your table. So the question says we have an exothermic reaction which also has negative entropy. This falls under category 4. And therefore the answer is the reaction will only be feasible below a certain temperature. Okay, pause the video and see if you can try answering this one. Which of the equations below represents a reaction that is feasible at all temperatures? With the table, it's very easy to see that we want something like this. Enthalpy to be negative and entropy to be positive. So let's go through each of these and work out which one has a negative enthalpy and a positive entropy. Starting with A, we can see that entropy is positive because we have one molecule on the left and two molecules on the right, and one of them is a gas. So that means the disorder has increased, it's become more randomly arranged, and therefore entropy has increased. Also, enthalpy is positive as well because they said it's endothermic. This falls in category 1, so it's not going to be the answer. So looking at B, we have three gases on the left and two on the right. So entropy is negative, and also it's exothermic. This falls in category number 4. The third one has one gas on the left and two on the right. So entropy has increased, and it's exothermic. Perfect. This is category number 3, and that is the answer. And to finish off, in D we have two gases on the left and one gas on the right. So entropy has decreased. And it's also endothermic. This is category number two. So perfect. The answer is going to be C.
some final points. Let's say we have a reaction that has a negative value for delta G. However, it says that the reaction does not appear to be happening. There are two reasons for this. Number one, maybe it is happening, but it's happening very, very slowly. Or the second reason could be the reaction has very high activation energy. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.